What's up guys, Rogue9 here and today we're taking another look at the extended barrel in Rainbow Six Siege. Those of you who've been following my work for a while now will know that in the past I have branded the extended barrel as pointless. But how have the recent changes to the damage drop-off modelling affected the extended barrel and what about Ela's new shotgun, the FO-12? There's only one way to find out. Begin. The video will be divided into three parts, timestamps in the comments section below. Part 1 will discuss the extended barrel function for rifles and SMGs plus some bugged drop-off curves I've uncovered. Part 2 will discuss the extended barrel function for the shotgun and Part 3 will be an evaluation, basically answering the question, should you use the extended barrel and if so, for which guns? So let's start out by understanding how the extended barrel works. The in-game description still claims that the extended barrel provides full damage over a longer distance range and as I demonstrated in my first video on this topic, this is incorrect. The reality is that with the extended barrel, damage drops off from exactly the same distance as without it and the only difference is that the minimum damage is raised, resulting in a flatter drop off. As you can see, max damage is not affected and we just have less drop off with more power at distance. And this is still how the extended barrel works for most of the weapons after the recent update, as you can see from the table I put together here. As always, if you're having trouble reading the numbers, you will find a link in the description that will take you to an online spreadsheet that you can explore at your leisure. This table covers the attacker weapons and apart from the R4C and Para 308 which receive a minor damage boost at close range against level 1 armor targets, all is as expected, until we get to the defender weapons. For Frost's 9mm C1, all is still good but that's where the consistency ends. Cavera's M12 and the French GIGN P90 have no damage drop off whatsoever once you attach the extended barrel. Yep, max damage at all distances. So the extended barrel must make these guns super OP, right? I would say wait for the evaluation at the end. Now while Jaeger's 416C does experience a damage drop off over the distances we would expect to see, the extended barrel also lowers the max damage for his gun by almost 10%. When it comes to the FBI's UMP45, all bets are off. I tested the damage at point blank range, then at 13, 18, 23, 28 and 40 meters and instead of following the expected drop off pattern, the damage was 5% higher at close range but then dropped down radically to a minimum damage of 30 points. Now given that the goal of bringing in a new damage drop off model was to add consistency to the game, it seems odd that the effect of the extended barrel should be so inconsistent for the defender weapons. Some of it may even be by design, I don't know, but whatever the case, I've taken the liberty of reporting this as a bug to Ubisoft. But now that we know how the extended barrel works for the simple damage drop off models of the rifles and SMGs, it's time to get stuck into the interesting part of this video, testing Ela's FO-12 shotgun. As you can see here, the FO-12 deals its max damage of 35 points for each of the 8 pellets up to a range of around 6 meters and then damage drops off to 24 points at 12 meters, the damage plateaus here before dropping off again after 18 meters, reaching its minimum of 12 points by 21 meters distance. Attaching the extended barrel does pretty much what you would expect from it. It raises the mid-range and long-range damage stats each by 5 points per pellet, with the only small inconsistency appearing during that second drop-off range. Here I didn't see the nice smooth drop-off that I got from the gun without the extended barrel, but instead damage instantly dropped to 18 points per pellet before settling on the minimum of 17 points. But that small detail aside, I'm quite happy with how consistent these numbers ended up being and I'm quite confident that the results are pretty accurate and dependable. And now that we know how the extended barrel works for all of the weapons that can attach it at all distances, it's time to evaluate these numbers and figure out whether or not you should consider using the extended barrel. There are only two drawbacks to attaching the extended barrel. 
It sticks out further so it can make you easier to spot when rounding a corner or hiding just to the side of a door or window, and you have the opportunity cost of missing out on one of the other muzzle attachments that can improve your gun's recoil. So the question we need to answer is, does the damage benefit justify dealing with harsher recoil and lower concealment? The damage benefit you get from the extended barrel as of the Blood Orchid update ranges from a mere 18% for the SMG11 up to 52% for the 416C, which sounds like a loss of variance, but if we calculate the required number of shots to kill for each weapon, this becomes an awful lot simpler. For almost all of the weapons, the number of shots to kill at the minimum damage range is lowered by 1, and in the case of Ela's shotgun, that difference is 1 pellet at mid-range and 3 for long range. Considering how nicely this has worked out, it makes me wonder if the way that the extended barrel works for the M12 and P90 is maybe not actually a bug, but by design. The UMP45 on the other hand, yeah, that's still messed up. The damage numbers I measured in my experiments mean that there is actually a range between 17 and 21 meters, depending on the armor of the operator you're up against, where the extended barrel results in you needing one extra shot to kill before needing the same and then finally one less from 27 meters and onwards. That's stupid and no one can tell me that that's working as intended. Okay, so to summarize, with most of the guns we need one less shot to kill. That sounds decently useful, not OP, but also not pointless, right? But let's dig a little deeper here. If we look at the ranges from which the additional damage starts giving you an actual benefit for each of the guns, you can see that those ranges tend to be quite far out. Against level 1 armor, the extended barrel on the attacker rifles will not benefit you at all at ranges below 29 to 32 meters. And even for the defender weapons, the shortest range at which the extended barrel results in one less shot to kill is with the M12 at 21 meters and onwards. If we calculate the shot to kill benefit against level 2 and level 3 armor, we can see that the number will usually be 0 up to 20 to 30 meters range, and then minus 1, but can also on occasion be 0 at all ranges or minus 2. The bottom line for rifles and SMGs is that since most of the combat takes place indoors, you will rarely get to engage your target at distances where it will actually benefit you, and even if you do, all you can hope for in most cases is one less shot to kill. Does this justify missing out on the significant recoil and muzzle flash reduction you can get from other attachments? My general answer would still be no. Sure, if you know that you will be spawn peeking or holding down a long corridor and you are using a gun that is controllable enough without a muzzle attachment, there could be an argument for using the extended barrel. But in most other cases, I do not think that the benefit of the extended barrel is enough to make it worth using. As before, the 9mm C1 is a special case here, since the gun does not have access to recoil reducing muzzle attachments. This removes the opportunity cost element from the equation and leaves the conclusion that as long as you are aware of the extra barrel length and how it can give away your position, there is no reason not to opt for the extra damage at range. But what about Ela's FO12? This is the first shotgun that is capable of attaching an extended barrel, and as we can see in the shot to kill table, it can result in needing up to three less pellets on target to achieve a kill against all three armor types. In real life, a longer barrel on a shotgun would lead to a tighter spread pattern which would be really useful in Rainbow Six. Sadly though, I compared the spread indicators in both cases and I can confirm that the extended barrel does not tighten up the pattern. Now let's again dive a little deeper into analyzing whether or not the damage boost for the extended barrel makes any difference for the FO12. With shotguns, their effectiveness is dictated by the number of pellets that can land on target, and as Prodigio Pete highlighted in one of his recent videos assessing the FO12 and 612, the way in which the 8 pellets are spread out in Rainbow Six Siege is pretty random. The pattern will always be different from shot to shot, and there are only a couple of rules that add at least some consistency. Firstly, one of the pellets will always land precisely at your point of aim, so as long as your aim is on target you will always land at least that pellet. The remaining 7 pellets will be spread out in a seemingly random pattern within the spread of your gun. When hip firing, the spread indicator of the HUD will give you a perfect guide for this. 
And finally, I believe there is one last rule that helps us understand the pellet pattern. If we examine a screenshot from one of my past videos, it becomes clear that with enough shots fired at the same spot, we end up with a donut ring pattern. Many shots in the outer half of the spread cone and distinctly fewer in the inner half. So the summary is one pellet in the center, seven patterned around the point of aim with most of them landing in the outer half of your spread indicator. If we use this knowledge and maybe an example test pattern, we can assess how many pellets are likely to hit at the distance at which the extended barrel will offer an advantage and that is from 12 to 18 meters and then again from 20 meters onwards. When hip firing, the fact is that even at 12 meters distance, landing more than one or two pellets on target is already fairly unlikely. The FO12 is most effective at ranges up to 6 meters, where you should reasonably be able to expect a one shot kill, and the maximum distance at which you can still reliably expect two pellets to hit is around 10 meters. Of course, if you attach a laser or aim down sights, these distances are pushed out by a little bit further, and within these effective ranges, the extended barrel does offer a small damage advantage of up to 21%, but the more significant damage boost of 42% does not occur until range beyond 20 meters where the FO12 is simply not effective anymore. The bottom line for the extended barrel on the FO12 is essentially the same as for the 9mm C1. Attaching it is not going to make a world of difference but unless you want to run a suppressor or you already know that you will be lurking in a spot of the map where the additional length of the barrel might give away your position, there is no real reason not to use the extended barrel despite the fact that the benefits are rather insignificant. Final conclusion, as in my previous video, I have to say that the extended barrel for all guns will only start to add a damage benefit at ranges that are fairly uncommon in a game where almost all of the combat occurs indoors. Whenever you have the option of attaching a recoil reducing muzzle attachment, it is almost always the better choice to take over the extended barrel. The extended barrel only makes sense if you know that you will be guarding a long hallway or attempting to snipe the opposition while still outside, and only on guns where recoil is inherently manageable. Apart from these very limited situations, my judgement of the extended barrel remains as before, it's pretty pointless. If you have any questions or comments related to the extended barrel, or if you have suggestions about what I should test next, go ahead and leave a comment below. And with that, as always, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next episode.